So our next speaker is Professor Matab Jafari, and she's going to be talking about the genetic similarities between humans and fruit flies. When you think about it, humans and fruit flies are pretty different, right? But it turns out that nearly 60% of human genes are shared and studied by, are shared with fruit flies and humans, excuse me. The reason is that fruit flies and humans use the same or similar genes to develop into adults. However, their short life cycle difference between the humans and fruit flies makes them an ideal subject for study in the laboratory. Dr. Jafari's ultimate goal is to use fruit fly as a model system to add healthy years to human life. Dr. Jafari received her PharmD from the UCSF School of Pharmacy in 1994 and completed a residency program in clinical pharmacy. In 2002, she joined Abbott Laboratories as a research scientist in the neuroscience department. At Abbott Neuroscience, she led studies on metabolic complications of the central nervous system. She joined pharmaceutical sciences at UCI in, in January of 2005 and developed the curriculum for pharmaceutical sciences. Her current research interest is anti-aging pharmacology in which she uses fruit fly as a model system. So um, what you see on this title is actually the wrong title <coughs> after um, Dr. Zhao's uh, presentation. I think my, the title of my talk should be to age or not to age. <laughs> um, so just keep that in mind. But this is pretty much what I do in my lab. We uh, work with botanical extracts and we are trying to find out if they can extend lifespan. So a little bit about our research. We refer to it as anti-aging pharmacology. Although in my lab, we don't work with any pharmaceuticals or any pharmacological agents, we work with uh, plant extracts. Um, so we identify them. We uh, try to find out if they extend the fruit fly lifespan. And I'm going to tell you why fruit flies are excellent model system, um, an excellent model system for this work. And then eventually we evaluate their mechanism, mechanism of action and why they are doing what they are doing. And of course, with any basic science field, you want to make sure that it has a clinical application and humans can benefit. My goal is not to extend my lifespan. I get this question all the time. I'm using them as a model system to learn about human aging. Um, but how did, I, how did I get here? Because as you heard, I was doing clinical stuff. So until really 2005, I was a clinical researcher and I was working I hope I'm pushing the direction. Oh, no, I'm not. Oops. I do it. OK. So I was working on in cardiovascular diseases, neurological diseases. I never did cancer, maybe a little bit of work with diabetes. And then I finally figured out, finally, after 15 years of doing that, that all these diseases of aging fall under the big umbrella of aging. So what if rather than focusing on one disease and another disease, focus on aging and trying to slow the aging process? And this, in a nutshell, is what we are trying to do in my lab. And in order to extend the lifespan, you may want to, the first question that comes to your mind is that, OK, this is a great idea, but this is almost like science fiction because we don't have any examples of exceptional longevities or you know, really, really long lifespans in the nature. <laughs> and the answer to the question, the comment, oh, I found the pointer here. I found a pointer, but I don't know how to use it. Oh, here we go. So starting with the fruit fly, which is a model system that I work with, the longest life is six months. And you can go down humans, um, 122 years. This is the longest lived documented human being. This is the cute Madame um, Jean-Claude Calmont, who passed away a few years ago. And then you get into the immortal jellyfish, which is biologically immortal. So we do have examples of immortality and exceptional longevity in the nature. So why not in humans? So this is what we are trying to um, address in my lab. So as we age, so this is in our 20s, 40s, and 60s or 70s. So as you can see, I'm not going to go into any details about what is happening. What you see here is aging. And if you are lucky, we make it over 120, and um, we look like Jean Calmont, who passed away a few years ago. And she was quite healthy, actually. Um, I'm not going to talk about her lifestyles, because I have some students in this room. She was a smoker. Um, so let's, let's not focus on that. So the goal of my research is not to get to 100 and look like this. This is my goal. 
<laughs> and, and I'm not just talking about looking like her, she's gorgeous, not looking like her, but maintaining the function and the youthfulness of a young body. So this is, this is what we are trying to do. So now I'm going to get to the did you know part. So Rob already gave half of my talk, so I'm going to go over the next few slides very, very fast. Thank you very much for doing that. But the question that I'm going to ask you is this. Did you know that we share about 75% of our disease genes with food flies? Did you know that we have models of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, schizophrenia, diabetes, addiction in food flies? Meaning that food flies can have these diseases and we can study them to test drugs that are used for these diseases. And I'm not going to bore you with this slide, with this diagram, uh, which was adapted from science in 2010. So this is just to show you how similar we are to fruit flies. So this is us, mammals, these are flies. This is the dietary restriction pathway. And if, without going into details, just pay attention to the names and numbers, and you will see that they are very similar than us. But fruit flies don't share just longevity pathways, because this is the focus of my lab, that they share some common age pathways with humans. Fruit flies, or us, I should say, humans behave just like fruit flies. And let me give you just a couple of examples. So how many of you guys in this room have been rejected, male or female, and got drunk? No <laughs> So this is exactly what a fruit fly would do. Um, so fruit flies, when they get injected, and they have the choice of drinking or food. And they are hungry fruit flies. So you would think that they go for the food because they are hungry. But no, they get drunk. So, so their behavior is very, very similar. Again, this is alcohol preference in fruit flies. And they just, they just go for the drink. They have no desire to eat. They were rejected. They go for the drink. We did this experiment in my lab. Please don't ask me why. Um, I, I don't know. I had a very um, outside the box student two years ago who wanted to do that. So we, what we did is that uh, younger male fruit flies were mated with younger females. So the male flies live slightly longer when they mated with younger females. I think this explains why you see so many older women, out, older men, out there with much younger women. But the news that I have for them is only slighter, so don't, don't go crazy. The opposite, female flies live considerably shorter when mated to younger males. Anybody knows why? You're taking care of them? No? Can't keep up with the guy. Can't keep up with the guy. No, these guys stress them. So shorter when they date or go out with younger fruit flies. We haven't published this work really. Because <laughs> I'm trying to find a very good journal to publish the work and we also need to do some mechanistic studies. <laughs> but that explains um, some behaviors in, in our community and I'm not going to say where we live but um, I think we all know. <laughs> So this is why I chose fruit flies as my model system. And without again going into any details, this is what we have developed over the past, I think this is still work in progress. So since 2005, we have been screening, trying to identify uh, botanical extracts that will increase longevity. And this is the algorithm that we developed. And the algorithm is very validated because other people in other labs and other countries use our algorithm to identify botanical extracts, and pharmaceuticals that might extend lifespan. But after 10 years of doing this, this is where we are. So we have identified four extracts that can increase the lifespan, some of them at the expense of something, which I don't have time to explain, but I will show you a few slides to see what, what I mean by extending the lifespan at the expense of something. But these extracts are rhodiola rosea, rosadamacena, curcumin, which is the active uh, compound in turmeric and uh, green tea. And I don't have cinnamon here, but cinnamon is also another uh, extract that we worked. And our paper was just published two weeks ago. Um, so I I'm going to show you in the next three slides just snapshots of our work. So this is our work with rhodiola rosea. We have a few papers suggesting that rhodiola rosea extends lifespan. And it has been a consistent increase in lifespan. So when we, published our, when we first published our paper, our first paper in 2007, 
Other people kind of repeated our work in other model system, worms, yeast, um, worm yeast and snails. And they also observe by span extension with rhodiola. And rhodiola does that without any health expense, meaning that our fruit flies are healthy. I think they look happy, right? I have some students, they look pretty happy. Um, and they just live a very good life. And we have given rhodiola to all their fruit flies because this is a quick tip I get that, wait a minute, you start giving rhodiola to kids, a bunch of fruit fly kids. And I said, no, I've given rhodiola to all the fruit flies and we've been able to slow the aging process in them too. Another, as I mentioned, turmeric is another compound or curcumin that we have worked with. And what we, this study was, to me, was very interesting because it was a parallel study with some colleagues in Korea who did the same study in a different lab environment, different strains of fruit flies. And what we discovered was that the lifespan extension with curcumin was sex specific. In my lab, we were able to extend the lifespan of male flies, flies not females, and in, uh, uh, the, and in KJ, my collaborator uh, lab, opposite result in Canton S flies, meaning that you know to make extend the lifespan, but only in female <coughs> flies. And then this is our last work that, as I said, just got published um, with cinnamon, showing that cinnamon can extend lifespan. But what I, th I thought it was very interesting with cinnamon was not just the lifespan extension property, but also the fact that cinnamon improved physical activity. And it kind of answered one of the questions that, um, or addressed a comment or a question that we always had about cinnamon and we didn't know why. How many of you know that if you're in a cold temperature, you can take cinnamon and it keeps your body warm? So, so some people from traditional medical practices in China, in Iran, that's where I'm from, they definitely use cinnamon to stay warm in harsh and cold temperatures. And we show that the reason for that is because cinnamon increases heat shock protein expression. And this was, I believe, to date, has never been documented. And finally, um, green tea. So how many of you drink green tea? OK, so if you are a woman, no problem. Drink as much green tea as you want. But if you are a man, <coughs> drink green tea if you don't want to have kids. Because what you show, because, or you're done. Or you're done with having kids, no need for more kids. Because what we showed was that green tea extended the lifespan of male fruit flies. Uh, and this was very funny observation that they extended the lifespan of male fruit flies only when they are with female flies because we separated them. So when male flies are alone, I think this goes back to the stress a little bit, um, they get no benefit from green tea. But what we also showed, this was the work of my graduate student, is that the green tea extends the lifespan of male fl fruit flies but it decreases their reproduction. So we have looked at various pathways in reproduction, we've been counting sperms, we look at our offspring. So, cinnamon, so green tea is not really a good idea if you want to have kids, or if you're a fruit fly, I should also say that. <laughs> um, so I would like to end my presentation by acknowledging you know, all my students, and um, there are some of them are here. So Dr. Shiner, um, I say former project scientist, but because he's no longer in my lab, but we're still collaborating. Um, Terry Lopez is my graduate student, my newest addition to the lab, Dr. Koskin, who's not here, and of course all my students, because working with fruit flies is very, very time consuming and labor intensive. And if you don't believe me, you can ask my students. Anyway, so since we have questions at the end, I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> okay, if you thought this was funny, did you think this is funny? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think this is funny. Yeah. Yeah.